Welcome, ZBHO world. My name is Spicy McLeroy with ZBrush Hangout out of San Antonio, Texas. And I'm here with some great friends and a great hero of mine. And I'm absolutely honored to host all these people tonight. And for tonight's artist panel, we have... Let me switch the screen over here because, you know, I'm really good with all this stuff, all this switch stuff. There we go. There we go. We've got Ad Lazy. We've got Christopher Jones. We've got Gen 506. We got Karen K. McTastic. We got Lonnie Sargent, the creaturepreneur. And we've got a, a new addition, Tay Allen. And the very special, the very great, the very amazing, the very inspiring. All around great guy, Nick Zuccarello. Thank you for being on the show, brother. Thanks for having me. Uh -oh. yeah. right. Everybody Super knows sweet. the rules of the show. You have one hour and 30 minutes to create a masterpiece based on the theme of the show. And tonight's theme is Aliens, the movie and the subject. And if you are sculpting, start with a primitive. If you're painting, start with a blank canvas. At the end of the show, you will be judged harshly till the end of time <laughs> by our amazing audi audience, and our winner shall be crowned. You have one hour, 30 minutes, starting right meow. All right. All right, Nick. <laughs> yes. I have to say, I have to say, I started ZBrush with like 2.5. And I learned, you know, like the UI and everything, and I was using the standard brush, but I had no idea what the hell to do with it. And then I saw you get this red wax sphere and just carve in some eyes and a mouth and just form it into an alien head. And I was like, oh, that's what you do with it. <laughs> and so after that, I just I just followed you forever. So it's 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 a great honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Wow. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to guess that was one of my very first videos that I probably ever made, uh, especially using the, uh, the trusty old red wax material, right? <laughs> um, does anybody ever uh, use that thing anymore? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. No, I don't. Actually, uh, I have to yell at my students when they use that. I say that's... Uh, that shows you're just a noob, so you have to uh, <laughs> use a different material. Yeah. yeah. So for those out there in the audience that have no idea who you are, can you paint us a picture of who Nick Zuccarello is and uh, and where you started, where you came from, man? Okay. Well, um, I think I'm just like you guys. I'm an artist that I've loved art from a very young age. I don't remember a time when I wasn't uh, drawing. Uh, so actually, just recently, my mom and dad came out and visited me, and we were talking about this, and my wife asked, like, you know, what age did Nick start drawing? And they just, they said, I was always drawing. My my mom said I asked her to draw uh, me a cow and <laughs> I was drawing a cow. And I think at two years old, I was drawing better than my mom was. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know? So I've always loved art. Um, and I wanted to do something with, with art. I loved video games as well. And so that was always kind of like a goal of mine to, uh, you know, be in the games industry. And uh, so I worked pretty hard to uh, get in the game industry. And my first job was out in uh, San Diego, California. I worked for Sony Online Entertainment at the time and uh, worked on uh, Star Wars Galaxies. It oh, was a nice. massively multiplayer online game. Um, and uh, from there, I went to High Moon Studios. And then after that, then I came to uh, Maitland, Florida, where I was working at EA and worked on John Madden football, NCAA football, and uh, a lot of the titles that they have there. And during my time at EA, um, this position came open where I could be the uh, graphics trainer for the studio. And that's where I learned that I really like, uh, like to teach. 
Um, and then this okay. uh, opportunity opened up at uh, the University of Central Florida, and there's a program there called FIA. It's Florida Interactive Entertainment Academy, oh, and okay. it's a master, it's a master's program where there's artists, designers, and programmers, and they all come together uh, to uh, learn how to make video games and stuff. So um, I had this opportunity to go and teach with them, so uh, I jumped on that, and that's uh, kind of where I'm at. And uh, Karen, I think you guys all know Karen. Uh, she was actually one of my students, so uh, I had the pleasure of being able to help her during, uh, you know, her early stages as an artist. And now I'm like super proud of all the work that she's doing. You know, she does Aww, uh, amazing work. Yeah, so everybody's super proud of Karen. Yeah, and she is the uh, she is a reigning champion on here. She has, right. she has the most wins. <laughs> Well, she just might beat me tonight, you know. So, oh, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to sculpt and talk at the same time. And everything. I know. It's yeah, the only way yeah. that we can give our artist panel like some. A handicap. Like, yeah, yeah. So I gotta keep asking you questions and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> keep talking to me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, so go a bit more into teaching. What, um. Whenever you found out that you liked teaching, what was the moment? What happened? And um... well, it was kind of odd. Like we were at the end of one of the cycles um, on Madden, and my art director, you know, they were talking about you know career growth and things like that. And he just said, you know, hey, there's this opening uh, for it was called EA University, uh, EAU, and he said, would you be interested in teaching? And I. I thought about it for a little while and I actually said to myself, yeah, I, I, I kind of like when I get to go walk around to other people's desk and maybe show them how to do certain techniques and stuff like that. So I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and apply for that. So I was I didn't really know what I was getting myself into at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I know Noman was, had their DVDs and things like that. And so like I kind of knew that um, when I went into this that I wanted to start making uh, video content and uh, maybe doing some teaching in that kind of capacity. And I remember at the time my, my boss was kind of like, he's like, uh, I don't know, it's going to be really hard to match the quality and uh, that, you know, Noman has. And I, I think Noman does have great yeah. quality for their mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but at that time, I don't think there was tons of people making video content and posting their stuff online. So, you know, um, I, I kind of had to figure all that stuff out um, on my own. I think I used Camtasia at the beginning, and I still mm -hmm. use Camtasia now for a lot of stuff. But uh, oh, OBS is great, dude. You should check out yeah, OBS yeah. and Premiere. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I have just found that, uh, yeah, Camtasia is just like, you know, get her done pretty quick and everything. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm kind of making less and less videos because – as you guys can see, there's just so much content out there now that, mm -hmm. um, you know, by the time I go and say I'm going to make something, um, it already exists anyways, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, you know, usually like right now I make, I make more kind of customized content for, uh, my students and I, right. I come up with a game plan for them when they come in the program, you know, we've got a year with our students. So, I come up with a very kind of structured plan for how to get them from zero to a hundred percent by the time they're done with that, that year with us. Nice. So I, I'd say my job's kind of uh, changed a little bit, but I still like the thing that I really like is just working with other people and trying to help them grow as artists, you know, um, that's kind of what my, my passion is. And so if I, if I can do that online, that's cool. But if I, uh, you know, this scenario that I'm in now, I get to like, be part of these people's lives for you know a full year it's it's a little bit sad after every year that you know people graduate and then they go on and then they have their careers and stuff like that but you know you you become friends with people and, and things like that you know but uh so it's like right now we just got this brand new group um that came in on monday so um we've got this we call them a cohort um that's a you know band of uh, people wor working together um, oh, nice. so we've got a whole brand new cohort um, 
of students. Uh, the other thing that's just really cool, I mean, I'm sure you guys all know what it's like to work in the industry where you're working with, uh, you know, not just artists, but you're working with designers and programmers and things like that. And mm -hmm. it's just really fun to see like what, what you guys can come up with as a group. So we still have all that at FIA, you know, uh, even though they're students. And some of the other things about working with students that I think is kind of interesting is that, uh, you know, students don't know what they shouldn't be doing. So a lot of times they try stuff and they're kind of create, uh, they're very, uh, have a lot of courage with what they're trying to uh, accomplish. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think they do things that maybe people in the professional world, they wouldn't take those, those chances, you know? So it's, right. it's really, really cool to see those things whenever they, uh, they pan out, you know? Yeah, teaching's super fun. I teach at a university as well, and it's um, and when they get that um, aha moment, they're like, "Oh, okay," you know. Or you come by and because I do like sculpt overs and stuff like that, videos for them, and like you're saying, mm -hmm. like customized content specifically for a student, and um, and yeah, it's absolutely rewarding mm -hmm. whenever you see how far they've gone from when you got your got um, got them in class till they graduated. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing I think is a little bit challenging, at least right now for our artists, is just, I think you guys know the, the competition level is just, just keeps going through the roof. It's oh, just, yeah. it's just a little insane, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I remember if I had to look at my portfolio whenever I first started out, I would, I, I couldn't even compete, you know, with uh, some of the students that we have uh, right now. But, you know, it's just, I really love these tools. I love, I love these tools like ZBrush, you know, it's just really been a huge game changer, you know, um, for me, I think I, I tried to look at, uh, different software. So early on I had, a, I got a hold of, you know, the very first version of Maya, whenever Maya first came out <laughs> and I just told myself, I, I said, I have to learn this, this program. So, uh, at the work, at the place that I worked at, I was able to have access to Maya. And I basically had to teach myself Maya um, after hours because, you know, nobody knew the program. And so the only way to learn Maya at that time was you had a big, giant, thick book, you know, that oh. taught you how to do everything. <laughs> yeah, no. So I, uh, <laughs> I lived with the book for probably, I don't know, maybe it was a couple months or so. And, uh, you know, I worked myself up to the point where I was using Maya and I was like, yeah, I really want to use this in a production environment. So, um, I kind of proved out that I could be the first person to use Maya. Uh, so I, th I think it was, that was a smart move on my part oh, yeah. to kind of learn that program. And then, you know, when ZBrush came around, that was another one of those programs where I just saw this, this thing where I was like, I just, I have to learn this program. I don't, I don't care what it takes. Right. I just know that this is going to be like huge for me. Um, you know, I've kind of substance is another um, program where I think that's, it became kind of a game changer for how things are done. Oh yeah. Uh, but if I had to take a guess right now at things, I would say um, using like the Oculus Medium program. I don't. I don't think it's quite there yet. It's not at the level of what you know I can do inside a ZBrush. But I have this sense that um, in the future, this is going to probably change the way that everybody works and the way that everybody kind of sculpts and things like that. You know, like I could don't. Oh, yeah, I can only absolutely. imagine. I can only imagine ZBrush and VR because the cool thing, like, I don't know if you guys have used uh, Medium yet or not, uh, but the really cool thing about that is that you get, you know, you get the sense of scale of something, right? So it's, to me, it's kind of like this next best thing to taking a sculpt and like holding it in your hand, right? Uh, being able to turn it in all different directions and stuff like that. So oh, yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah, Definitely. I hope ZBrush is working on a VR solution because if they're not, they are going to lose a huge, huge market. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah. They aren't dumb at all, so I'm pretty sure they're working on something. Yeah, I think. Um, have you guys seen uh, Gravity Sketch? I think it's called mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that. It's another. Um, it's another VR sculpting app that uh, I'm seeing. I haven't tried it yet, but um, I think Google came out with something called Blocks. I, I believe. Um, so oh, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's 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 um it's just it's just kind of interesting uh, to see what's happening with that. And has anybody tried uh, Tilt Brush in here? At uh, all? I've seen it, but I have not tried. I haven't tried any of the VR stuff yet. Yeah. yeah. But Tilt Brush is um 
it's 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 pretty interesting. So it's you know you're you're um you're drawing in 3D instead of you know just this two dimensional thing. So yeah, it looks like uh, you're drawing we, in the world of Tron or something. Yeah. <laughs> we have a we we have a friend that uh, draws with tilt brush and he he loves it. He said it's it's amazing. Like. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am seeing people that they're they're starting to use it pr for like previs and kind of figuring out figuring out spaces and things like that too. Mm -hmm. So um, so that it's just kind of interesting to see where this this technology might be headed. You know, because um, I'm I'm a little bit more excited about it as like an art tool and viewing art as well. Um, right. So I'd say that's I, I really need to post this work up, but. Um, a lot of the work that I've been doing lately is taking my characters and my creatures and then putting them in Unreal so you can view them uh, in 3D uh, using VR. Um, and I'm, I'm just not, I, I'm just not quite there yet where I want to share it out. But I was, you know, I have this plan of uh, putting it out there for everybody. I'll probably put it out for free just so they could, you know, check out check out the work. But it's, uh, I'm buddy in. It's so cool. He's showed me a couple of things he did and like the the hand controls i don't know what they're called but they they act as like lights like you can light the object do you know what i mean mm -hmm. nice. um it was really neat it's it's super strange being that that close to like something you made I don't know. yeah i think it's take it's a learning curve in general for that kind of deal but once you get used to it like zbrush eh, you can't <laughs> It's you can't get out of it, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Well, Nick, we are gonna let you catch up. And we're gonna get with our artist panel for a second. Okay, cool. And right, add. Nice. Add. Hello. How's it going, I'm brother? <laughs> way way to crash, right? Right as soon as I put my uh, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I highlight your screen. <laughs> yeah, I, I just had a, my first crash, yeah. Nice. I am um I'm Ad. You can find me on our station. <laughs> My name Adrian M. Um, I do concept art, creatures, I work with Unreal Engine, and all that stuff. And I do freelance. There you go. So what are you going to be sculpting? You be... had a spider-looking creature going. Yeah, I want, I want to sculpt like a, like a version of a queen, right? Mm -hmm. An alien queen. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a, a shark. Xenomorph mix. No, it's like, it's so <laughs> like mean. A, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be something. It's definitely gonna be something. I don't know. Well, glad Let's to have see. you on the show, brother. Glad to be here. Riss Jones. Let everybody know who you are, what you do, where they can find you. What's up? What's up? My name is Chris Jones. Uh, you can find me on a, a bunch of social media outlets. I'm a I'm a character artist or artist in general, wherever you want me want to call me. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can find me on the Facebooks, the the art station, everything under my name, Chris Jones. And that's that's probably a bad thing to do, but you know, go for it. Brother, well, thank you for no, being on the lands. show, man. Uh, Hire this guy, please. <laughs> And then we've got Jen five oh six. What's going on, brother? Let him let him know what you do, where they can find um, you. I'm a yeah, a character artist and also a creature artist. And uh, you can find me on our station by Jen five oh six. And um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be doing this guy uh, for tonight. This alien dude. Is that from it's Alien Three? Cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's from a non released uh, title. You know? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not released now, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that leg like, muscle like, is looking good, yeah. dude. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for having me. Dude. Oh, yeah, man. Glad to have you on here. And Hiram, highly top secret. Oh, my goodness. How are you here? He is here. And he's muted. And... Oh. Let them know who you are, what you do, oh, and where they can find you, brother. Uh, my name is Hiram Topete Diaz. Um, you guys can find me on my Facebook page on Highly Top Secret or um, Art Station, also Highly Top Secret. Uh, do main ZBrush artists, 
working a lot with um, 3D printing. And what are you going to be sculpting for, for us tonight? Um, I think I'm going for a, from Alien 2. Xenomorphs. Nice. Dude, the classic Xenomorph for sure. Yeah. Well, glad to have you on the show, brother. Glad to I'm have you here. Classic man. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Karen, the always Mattastic. Let them, know, let them know who you are, <laughs> what you do, where they can find you. Um, I am a character artist. I work on sports games, and you can find me on ArtStation. And I'm sculpting a Xenomorph. <laughs> For which Based one? On, I don't know. I haven't actually seen Alien. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, so everybody out there, we will have an opening for the artist panel right. next week. <laughs> Movie night. <laughs> 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 um, but I'm basing it off this drawing by Edward oh, Delandre. I thought it was really cool. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Good Hopefully choice. I do it justice. Well, at least you got good taste. Man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and glad to have you on the show. Thank you very Great. much. And Lonnie, the creaturepreneur, you're muted. That's me. Let them know who you are, what you do, where they can find you, brother. I'm that guy in the corner. Mm. You know, the quiet That one. guy in the club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can see me at Art Station, Lonnie Sargent, L O N N I E S A R G E N T. You can see me over on Zero Central and Big Tat 7. I'm on Facebook. Look me up. Page is open. Go, brother. And which uh, which one are you sculpting? Are you doing your own version? I'm doing my own version of uh, Xenomorph. Right, so this is the uh, from it looks a little bit like the Alien Three, the child or the one that was given birth to. You know what I'm talking about? Kind of, sort of, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Good, brother. Thanks for being on the show, man. Betcha. And then our new addition to the panel, Tay Allen. Let them know who you are, what you do, where they can find you. Howdy, I'm Tay. Um, I am a well, aspiring character artist, I suppose. Um, general, general. Uh, what do you call it? General artist. 3D. Yeah. yeah well, um, I do a lot of 3D these days, but uh, yeah, pretty much characters. Um, and uh, you can find me on Art Station. There you go. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And uh, and I know everybody here has um, learned from Nixie and has been following Nixie for a while. So I give I I open up the uh, well. Let me get to the let me get to the to the audience because they're going crazy over here and they're all saying hi Nick hi Nick. So <laughs> Joe Mans <laughs> says what's up Nick. Robert <laughs> Brown says it's great to see you again Nick. Looking forward to this. Uh, Carlos Garcia says, hey, ZB Ho crew, excited to see what you guys come up with this time around. Jim Nubo Bra, I think it's Nubra, says, hello, Nick. And Paula, Cody, and uh, they all say hi. And Karen's number one, and Tay Allen is her girl. Yeah. So thanks to everyone. If you have any questions for Nick or the panel, please let uh, put them in the comments and I will get to them. But um, as I was saying before, everybody's learned something from Nick Z and been following him for a while. So if you have any questions on the panel, I open it up to you guys. Uh, question. <laughs> um, how did you uh, do the, how did you learn how to do the Oculus stuff with Unreal? Like, was that stuff you had to discover on your own or was there already like tutorials? Mm, I'm trying to think. Um, no, I mean, I've been, I've been very enthusiastic about the VR thing, uh, you know, since it first started up. Um, Palmer Lucky, you guys know who he is. Um, yeah. Nobody? 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 Sure. Oh, yeah. Horrible okay. audience. Horrible audience. <laughs> uh, well, there was a little bit of controversy. Maybe you guys heard about him with the, uh, the whole Trump thing or whatever during the election. Uh, but he was kind of like uh, maybe forced out of oculus but um at the beginning i met i got to meet him at uh gdc and it, it, he was a really cool um 
enthusiastic guy. So I, I was pretty impressed too. He was, he was very young at the time. I can't remember if he was like 22 or 23 or whatever. But uh, I remember seeing, uh, you know, standing in this huge long line just to be one of the first people to actually uh, stick your face into the, uh, what at the time was the pro- the first prototype of the Oculus, you know, mm-hmm. and the frame rate was horrible and the screen resolution was bad and you could they they had this kind of like what they call the screen door effect which the uh because the the display was so small and it was being blown up by um by the the pixels the lenses yeah you can see yeah you can see the pixels so you could actually see the black lines in between the pixels and that's what they call this screen door effect but like Uh even that first glimpse i was like oh this is going to be awesome because you know it's just uh instead of looking at this 2d screen it's almost like you get transported to some other world right and uh, so ever since then when they put out their kickstarter campaign like we got on that and i had the the dk1 at the time i was using udk and um i made this like entire first person shooter level where it was like this demon abyss hell thing because you know i either like aliens or demons i just can't I don't know. I can't stop that um, and I thought it was really cool, but at the time, like you know, I don't, I don't think I really knew like what I was doing as far as uh, the frame rate was like 24 frames a second or something. I knew that wasn't great, but um, you know, at the time that was like the best that I could push with the hardware. But you know, now we know that you need to be pushing uh, 90 frames a second, otherwise you're going to make people sick. You know. Um, but I, um, I made this entire level and all this kind of cool stuff for it. There's, there's some video content on my, uh, my YouTube page that, that kind of shows it off. But um, because the UE4 came out, um, none of that stuff could translate over. I would have to basically rebuild it all from scratch. And so then I just started looking into it more. And then as soon as I got a hold of um, the, the Vive, the Vive lets you... Um, do room scale space. So I think that's another thing that really helps alleviate any kind of sickness problems. As soon as your body is moving along with what's happening in VR, you're not going to get that VR sickness, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So um, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm probably using uh, the Vive a lot more for development, but uh, like I was saying, I'm really excited about the the tool sets and stuff like that that's being uh, created by the Oculus team, you know? So that's kind of how I got into it. So I, I don't know. I've, there was no tutorials and everything else like that. It was just kind of, you know, um, it was all new stuff. So just kind of learning as you go along, right along with everyone else, you know, I try to stay um, active on the forums and stuff like that and try to stay on top of uh, information and what's being produced, you know, now it's getting like really tough because, um, you know, um, Unreal has their own YouTube channel and they put out just, so much content now it's just it's really uh, it's really difficult to to keep up with everything that they do and all the different kind of version changes that they're doing with the engine you know so Mm -hmm. i i I don't know that's another company i I just i love unreal i i I love the work that they do you know um it's just pretty amazing it's pretty amazing that we have access to um this tool set you know um Because, you know, my time during uh, working in the game industry, you would need like an artist, maybe a technical artist, and you had to work with a programmer and, you know, you had to make your custom shaders and all that stuff. But then as soon as I got a hold of UE4, I could basically do all that stuff myself, you know. So um, I'm also trying to learn a little bit about, you know, blueprints and things like that. So trying to step out of what I used to be is just like making characters and creatures and stuff like that. So I guess I'm more like of a generalist now at this point. Yeah. When I saw that demon level you did, I was, I remember at the time I was just thinking like, you did all this, like thinking, (laughs) wait a second, but you're an artist, but you did all everything. Okay. And so that was kind of neat. Cause I was like, all right, maybe I could do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Now, the one thing, I have no illusions about this, that uh, animation is not my strong suit. So <laughs> I, can, I can make things move, but that's about the extent of it. So I've got a, I've got a lot of respect for uh, animators, you know, that they can basically take something and they can kind of oh, bring yeah, but, life uh, into something. There's, uh, there's animation packs in the Unreal Marketplace store, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. Don't even need animators. Yeah, yeah oh. man, forget animators, dude. <laughs> <don't> like <laughs> you, can just, you can just mocap everything, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Right. Those yeah. jittery animations. That, that walk cycle assignment we had, we had to just, it was like one of our first animation assignments, and I was like, oh, this, this will be okay, and it was so difficult. <laughs> it just looked like a robot. It was just, ugh. Yeah. Animation. No, thank you. Really, animation is really, really hard. Like, you need to do only that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. if, if you're a designer, you can also be like a, like, let's say you do 2D sketches and stuff like that. But if you're an animator, you gotta just be an animator. That's <laughs> it. Not even a rigger. Like, <laughs> that is the, one of the hardest things to nail. Like, so, can, uh, can I ask a question? Oh, of course. Okay, Mr. Top Secret. He was talking about 3D printing. Can uh, can you talk about that a little bit? I'm, I'm I'm I like 3D printing as well, and so I'm I'm curious um, what you're doing for your prints. Oh, he left, dude. Oh, he left. He left. <laughs> he's like, I ain't well, answering that question. That. Oh. Yeah, he uh, kind of hurt. He's, uh, oh man, he's too. No, he's having problems man. with his Cintiq. He keeps uh, crapping out on it. So I sure but know. I have a I have a question for Karen actually. Uh -oh. um, yes. How how did you survive until 2017 without seeing Alien? Uh, if you if you knew the movies I have not seen, you would be even more upset right now. <laughs> we'll, talk, upset. we'll talk about that later. Though. <laughs> and, and also, I have a suggestion for Nick. Um, yeah. Just a, just a suggestion. Sure. Um, would it be interesting to as a course, right, to have a a course of watching and commenting on movies for your students? <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Um, actually, um, one of the things that I've noticed about the students that I think would be good for them is to kind of expand their visual library a bit. So um, this cohort, um, I'm going to be targeting certain artists and exposing them to them. Uh, at the first eight weeks of the first semester that we have with them. And then the uh, last eight weeks, we're going to be uh, looking at some different films that I think were visually uh, inspiring to me, like when I was, you know, younger. Um, Alien is one of one of the films, uh, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Ridley Scott, and mm -hmm. I really like the first Alien movie. I, I know it's more of a, a horror film, but I just... I really think there's a lot of beautiful shots in that uh, oh, yeah. in that movie with the with the colors and then the depth of field for the you know the focus on uh, different subjects and stuff like that. So um, that's that's actually going to be uh, something that we're going to be doing. We're actually going to have uh, some dedicated movie watching time, and I'm I'm excited about that. That's awesome. It's, oh, by the way, do you teach like an online course or this is like um, like no. you know, actually place that people go to to actually learn no this is actually you know like i was saying with the university of central florida um and so our program is a um it's it's a 16 month program but really what we do we have basically one year with the artist and then the last semester they can go off and they can do internships um or they get to go into a class it's called a venture track class where they kind of learn how to maybe start their own company and maybe uh form their own llc stuff like that but uh, as far as like the hardcore kind of training that we do with them um we basically have one year with them to do that cool interesting oh. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a unique, uh, unique program. Um, kind of, kind of makes you think of FZD, right? They also have like a very condensed training. Mm -hmm. um, Karen can speak to this because she was a student, so she knows what the experience is uh, a lot better than than I do. But uh, there's also this thing they call Capstone, where we get artists, designers, and programmers, and they work together to build their own game, just like you would in the industry. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's kind of unique is that we've got a cubicle set up, just like we, we really try to emulate industry as closely as possible. So you get to, uh, you know, learn how to work on teams, work with other people and personalities and kind of work out any kind of kinks that you might have um, before you get into the industry, you know? Um, Karen, do you want to talk about your, your experience as a... Yeah, um, it was it was the real deal, like all the way down to how do we buy licenses for the software we used for, you know, I mean, how do we legally do this correctly? Uh, which I wasn't even thinking about at the time, but um, our game was successful too. We we did Kickstarter and 
it was it was good that we had the capstone, which was like the last sort of big student project. But then this was that was almost a rough draft for you know, can you do the real thing? Can you have a successful game? Um, and we approached it from the angle of like we actually want to like make money and make a company, um, and it it did well. I mean, we all kind of moved on and found our jobs elsewhere. Um, but yeah, it was it was really cool. And any I mean the teachers are still there. It wasn't like you know you guys disappeared. So if we had issues or problems, you guys were there to help. Um, it's kind of like starting a company, but someone could hold her hand if we needed it. Right. <laughs> well, uh, so Connor Connor Hollis says, "What's up, Nick and Karen?" <laughs> Hello, Connor. And, He's a student of mine. Yeah. Oh, nice! And welcome yeah. to the show. Thank Connor. you for being on. And um, yeah, he says, um, "Shout out from the newest cohort. Super excited for the program." Cody awesome. Knoll says that. Yes. Cody Knoll. I know that guy. Oh yeah, guy. yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So he's was, the guy that you were talking about earlier. <laughs> I was gonna say you were talking about um, movies and visual library and all that. And I remember you showed us. Uh, it was like four of us, four artists on this capstone team, and you had us in a room and you had us watch Hellboy two and I think Dune because like, they sort of we kind of needed inspiration. <laughs> like we needed <laughs> something cool to just be like, whoa, we need to step it up and that and i was like wow this would never happen in a normal school like your teacher's <laughs> like you need to watch this movie mm -hmm. and i was like this industry is great <laughs> so how do you uh, how do you present that to the students like like did you just like hey all right today we're gonna be watch hellboy 2 all right everybody be quiet <laughs> or well, <laughs> like how'd you preface it <laughs> well during during that time period um Karen was actually a lead on the uh, capstone project that she was on. And um, we would, um, I was kind of like an advisor for that team. Um, so we would meet on a weekly basis and I would take a look at the work that they're putting together. And I would try to, you know, play the, the art director kind of role a little bit, you know, um, and so is this basically any anything that I could think of visually that might kind of help them um, with their project is, you know, I, I felt like that was kind of kind of my job to kind of help inspire them, maybe show them some things that they haven't seen before and kind of maybe get them to think about different concepts and things like that, you know. Um, and the other thing that I think is, I'm, I'm just going to keep bragging on Karen, was uh, no. <laughs> no. The, the team actually was, there was a period where um, the team was just kind of in this funk and they weren't just doing so great. And uh, I don't know, Karen, Karen found, found a way to inspire the artist and kind of rally the troops. And um, I think what they ended up with at the very end, it, it, it ended up being... Uh, a really good project, you know, so I think, I think it was really cool, but, um, you know, it, it, it it's kind of funny to watch, uh, somebody grow, you know, at the very beginning, mm -hmm. Karen was like very kind of, I think she was kind of more shy. And, uh, I, I think she kept having this thought where she's like, are you sure? Like, I'm going to be a lead. Like, are you sure I can do this? And, mm -hmm. you know, by the end, she just totally owned it, you know, and now, now look at her, you know, she's all over the internet, she's famous, you know. No, right. no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Totally amazing, Facebook, super cool. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, she, she got, she got <laughs> all the line, you know. Steals all our trophies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a time check, we have 53 minutes left. All right, and then you shall be judged. And everybody uh, that's watching on the show, uh, at the end of the show, of course, you do get to judge who won. So far, Karen and Jen have won. Karen has won the most. Uh, Wait, Jen, Jen you won the clown one? Because... With two votes. <laughs> yeah. No, that was uh, Roger. Oh, that was Roger. right. Didn't you win, Jen? No one? No one? Jen no, hasn't no. won. All right, well, Karen's the champion then. <laughs> champion. All right, everybody, we gotta get to her. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do. So, what do you think about that uh, Hellboy, that new Hellboy movie show that they're gonna be doing? 
Have you seen mm. that, Nick? No, I have not. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, the guy from Stranger Things, the uh, the father figure guy, cop dude. He's gonna uh -huh. be uh, he's gonna be Hellboy. Okay, interesting. I do uh, I do like Ron Perlman, so um, hmm. That'll that'll be interesting. Um, and Stranger Things too. Do you guys know when that's supposed to be coming out? Dude, um, no, but I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the excitement in your voice. Right yeah. Now. Right. So since Karen confessed that she hasn't seen Alien, I I got a confession. Um, I uh, no. I just started watching Game of Thrones. So. <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. At least you started. Yeah. Yeah. At least you started. Because <laughs> I just, you know, so many people kept giving me heck about the fact that I haven't <laughs> seen Game of Thrones. Like, okay, I gotta, I gotta watch this now. So, so what do you think? Got, um, pretty cool. Um, I don't know. It feels like to me like grown-up Zelda with a lot of sex or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah. So. Uh, pretty cool um i'm only let's see second second season i'm in the second season so i got i got that hbo now and i'm trying to burn through it pretty oh, quickly nice. so i can get caught up yeah yeah well but, you gotta uh, you got a great time to get caught up because by the time you do you'll be waiting for the last season so. yeah good time. But there are dragons the dragons are little so far so i'm waiting to i'm waiting to see some big <laughs> dragons i want big dragons yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end, um, dragons all die, right? We're uh, <laughs> gonna spoil everything for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's kind of good because like all the spoilers, you're like, I have no idea what y'all are talking yeah. about. I just see people very <laughs> angry about the spoilers thing. <laughs> oh yeah, there was some mm -hmm. leaks. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Horrible, horrible people. <laughs> I know. Who would do such a thing? So you've, if if you're really into it, you just have to stay away from Facebook for like a couple days or or what? Yeah, at least till Wednesday. Basically. At least till yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Sure. So Powerball's at seven hundred fifty million, <laughs> Nick. Mm. So let's say <laughs> let's say you win seven hundred fifty million dollars, and you have okay. to build a CG knowledge compound, right? Where you just bring four artists to you. <laughs> and they teach you everything that you want them to teach you because you have all the money in the oh, world, right? I thought you was going to get four hours to just drain every every knowledge you have. With your computer. computer. <laughs> so so who, who's going, who are you bringing to your knowledge compound? Dude? Hmm, so if you can, I can learn from anybody, right? Anybody, anybody. Yeah. Else. Well, I'm kind of a big fan of, uh, you just had him on the show, Danny Williams. Oh, um, yeah point pusher mm -hmm. yeah um really like his stuff quite a bit um i i used to work with mike polovich you guys know him right yeah i met him he's yeah. super cool super yep. cool um so i don't know just about any time i need to learn anything these days he's he's made so much video content it's just kind of it's just ridiculous you know um let's see joseph drust uh i'm a big fan of his work too you know mm -hmm. um and do I get one more? Let's one more. See. One more. Hmm. And it could be any artist, right? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, we just say artists. Yeah. I'd Anybody. like to maybe Sid Mead. I'd like to hmm. meet him, learn something from him. I don't know. Good yeah. I'm a, I'm a big Blade Runner fan, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I think that would be rather cool. Well, what about you, Ad? <laughs> What about um, you, Ad? Who's coming to your knowledge compound? Four artists, man. Four artists. Four artists. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. Um, I would definitely want to have um, Go Mad, uh, Neville Page, Scott Robertson, obviously. Mm-hmm. One more. One and, more. Um, and Geiger. Ooh, nice. <laughs> nice. Christopher Jones, four Wrong artists coming to your compound. Really, the compound's gonna be really small since uh, I'm gonna be blowing all that money away. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so instead of four, is I'm probably gonna get only have enough room for one, and then and he won't even like me. <laughs> so who's ah, the one shit. that's gonna reject you then? 
Oh, all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> they say y'all didn't share that money with me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, really, it's that's kind of hard to think because I like so many that I, that I like to t I take away from. It's kind of hard to actually have a top four. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you're just gonna have to do I it, and you're live on the show. So who are the four, Dean? Who are the four? Hmm. Shit. Uh, SB3D artist, right? Artist. In general. So yeah. Prince qualifies. Um, then yes. Then yes, uh, of course. Nakamura qualifies. I forgot what was that one right, artist. Right. He, he was a creature. I can't remember the names in general, but I love their work. I remember their work if I see it, but. What about, you, Jen? what about you, Jen? What about you, Jen? Who's coming to your knowledge compound? Uh, Bekinski, Bacon, uh, Geiger, uh, well, Sydney is, is another awesome one. And yeah, for, I guess, Gio and Napkill as well for the 3D guys. And oh, yeah. yeah, that's four. <laughs> yeah, that's five, actually. So we're going to have to kill one of them. Oh, so okay. I hope so, you're proud of yourself. Anyone. <laughs> 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 He's already dead, so. I was going to my compound. <laughs> All right, Karen. Who's, who's in your compound, yeah? Oh, um, hmm. Um, probably Daniel Williams, quite for sure. I'm thinking of people I want to take classes from. Um, mm -hmm. Shane Olson. I think I sent you that mm -hmm. workshop class the other day. Uh, mm -hmm. It was all about that. Um, some 3D printing master. Maybe Robert will join my compound. <laughs> and. And uh, this guy at work, I pick his brain all the time. Uh, Stephen Gear, he's like, a, he's not, he has like no online presence. It's insane. That's the thing. There's so many artists out there that are like probably cool. amazing, and they just choose to not. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's three. Or I got one more. Um, how Same. about you, Ron? Oh, oh, oh wow! Someone just won the oh. show. Eh. Wow! There we go. <laughs> Editor. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lonnie, four artists are coming to your compound. Who are they? Dude? You just won the lotto. Seven hundred fifty million. Everybody, dude, I'm freaking millionaire. Everybody's going. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first like four, Lonnie. the first four that are going to come to your compound, who are they? The first four. Mm -hmm. That'd be the first four that walk through the door. Mm. I like Lonnie. All right, then Tay. Ah, uh, hmm. No, Bradley. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bradley. nice, nice. Yeah. I, I like his his paintings are just oh god. Um, hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody from the traditional side, so always James Gurney. I always oh, love his stuff. Oh, interesting. Ah, uh, see here. Number three. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Can we revive people from the dead? Hold on, that's the question. No, no, if we no, can, no. then Michael Turner is on the list. Actually, right. actually, yeah, I have a question. I have a question after this, so yeah, there, there you got one more. You got one more. One more. Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. I gotta make it good. Um. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, there's so many to pick. There's so many to pick. Are you talking Michael Turner, the comic book artist? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I I wish he was still yeah still around, man. Um, okay, I'll pick another comic book artist in his place. No, 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 you pick Michael Turner. You pick him. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 you go ahead. What's the last one? Okay, all right, right, cool. All right. Back from the dead. Okay. Uh, right. uh, God, this is hard. <laughs> Okay, thanks you. Yeah. There right, we go. There, you go. there oh. we go. Oh, nice. Son of that. All right. So Ryan Kingsland for me in the morning to get my mind right. <laughs> All right. And then yeah, point pusher. <laughs> point pusher to get my creativity going right before lunch. And then uh, Raf Brissetti to keep me up. And then Geo <laughs> to uh, to lead me into the future of sculpting. Oh, I just want to say lead me to the greatest night of my life or something like that he was leaning for <laughs> so uh 
I said, all right, this is going. To, this is not your top five. You want to be in your box or something else. And Tom McGuire says Nick Zuccarello is in his compound. Oh, oh yeah. Hold on. People so, in the audience are your top four, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. In the audience, you just won seven hundred fifty million dollars. <laughs> you created a compound that you're going to invite four artists to. Let us know in the comments who your top four artists are. Right. See, um, I didn't know so the beginning we, we, could, say we could invite dead people, though. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had this big part, because I said, oh, my God. I like a lot of live people, but there's so many dead people that are cooler. I mean, nicer. <laughs> the big team, man. Wow. That's actually that's actually my question. But before that, I just I just want to say that I kept imagining Ryan Kingsland in the morning, like when you wake up, I was like, "Hi there, Ryan Kingsland here. Would you like to pick up with eggs and bacon or a salad?" <laughs> You're showering, you know. <laughs> I love his videos, man. His videos get me yeah, thinking. You know, it's like like we get so much into just the art, technical, get it done side that he kind of brings it back to the cerebral self awareness side, and I really appreciate that about him. He's that spiritual uh, guy that you want to listen to the morning, you know, that cup, the morning Joe kind of deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. my uh, my question, my question was, if you could bring an artist back from the dead, but you'd have to sacrifice one that's living now. <laughs> oh, uh, Frank Frazetta and Rob Layfield. Would you rather? <laughs> <laughs> You said that real quick. Oh yeah, easy. That's easy one, dude. Easy one. Oh, I was also thinking of Frank Frazetta, man. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Is anybody actually old enough to remember Rob Liefeld with the uh, Levi's commercial? Oh yeah, yeah. with Spike Lee, yeah. directed by Spike Lee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Button up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That was cool. I was like, man, yeah, how does he uh, do all that? <laughs> I was I was big into image comics back mm -hmm. in the day. I think that was so Jim Jim Lee, I love I love his stuff. You know, I've always been a Jim Lee fan. And uh I just recently posted something up to my uh uh actually I, I thought that was on my Facebook, but uh Todd McFarlane uh just talking about like his kind of history of you know him working at Marvel and then those guys forming Image Comics and him doing his toy line and everything. I don't know. It was just very inspirational to hear this artist talk about like he wasn't sure how to do all these different things, but just you know, I'm, nobody's going to stop me. I'm just going to go ahead and do it, you know, kind of thing. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah he, he definitely like skyrocketed. It went way beyond what any other comic book artist had done. I mean, mm -hmm. besides, you know, like Stan Lee, of course, but like uh, in terms of that, like notoriety and name and style and like industry and Todd McFarlane toys and like entrepreneur, yeah, he's got, you know. Great. He's got amazing sculptors, you know, for McFarlane toys, you know. Mm -hmm. so. um, another guy that I worked with uh, at EA, Tony Reynolds. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but uh, he does some sculpts for uh, – McFarland toys and stuff like that, but he does just some amazing, uh, you know, realistic kind of portrait sculpture kind of work um, as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Steve Lloyd's got to have the Mill Kerketa. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Yeah. I don't know if I'm pretty sure I'm not saying his name right, but he comes out with like <laughs> like daily likeness sculpts. Him and Jose and Diva. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're great. Oh. Those WWE sculpts are insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, that's what I show people when, like, they're they're like, "What do you do?" And I'm like, "This is what I could do if I were better." <laughs> like, look at this guy's stuff. He's so cool. <laughs> that's a photo. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Wish so what, it was. Um... So I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Nah, I just uh, actually that's one of the guys I really want to learn for. Like all that real. It's just. His work is like really, really on point, mm -hmm. on point exactly the way I like, the way I want some of my stuff to be. But hey, as such, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, you always, uh, you always finish on a positive tone. I yeah, like man, that that's, that's what we love about you. So, speaking of uh, starting off or learning or anything like that, what advice would you uh, would you give someone starting in this industry, uh, Nick? 
Hmm. Well, I think anatomy is super important. You know, um, I think there's this thought that if you can learn how to draw the the human figure, you can you can master just just about anything. You know, um, mm -hmm. I like to think of the human body as one of the most complex machines you know that we know of. Um, so if you can do that, I, I think you can you can do quite a bit. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I think the fundamentals are pretty important. You know, um, when I was uh, going to school, we didn't have all these different programs and we didn't have even, you know, classes set up for some of the digital stuff that was going on. I actually had to uh, take out some money and I got an Apple computer at the time. I was using, uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this program, it was called Hashing's Animation Master and it was a spline-based modeling program and that's right. what I used to teach myself 3D, kind of built my portfolio up enough to where I was able to get hired on. I, I, I lived in Missouri, so I got this job in St. Louis working for a, uh, this company that did large format graphics for uh, trade shows and stuff. So I actually was able to be a 3D artist for that. But um, basically, you know, um, I just learned the fundamentals uh, of our, you know, um, form and design and things like that. So I think all that stuff is super important, you know, because if you don't learn the foundational stuff and you you just learn the tools, I've I've seen artists struggle with that at times, right? Mm -hmm. Where they mm -hmm. they they've got all the detail in there and everything looks really crisp and everything else like that, but there's just something lacking in the overall like base proportions of things, right? And no matter how much detail you put on something, you can't you can't fix it through uh, just adding more visual stuff to it, right? The, the proportion stuff is like super important to, to have all that nailed down first. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, <clears throat> I've been sketching a lot lately and I've been noticing a whole lot more forms that I didn't notice whenever I was just sculpting all the time. And um, like, uh, like on the face or around the lips, you know, just certain areas have, a, you know, painting highlights and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I highly suggest doing 2D and 3D in tandem at all times, you know, mm -hmm. whenever you can. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I've always liked to draw, and I'm, I'm trying to get a little better at digital painting and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. I do know some 3D artists that um, I don't I don't think they, they don't illustrate all that well, but they're just amazing 3D artists. So I have seen I have seen that happen, but I, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think that um, if you could draw well, that it's going to help you whenever you go to sculpt and things like that. You know, like this noodly stage that I'm kind of at right now on my thing is just, you know, it feels a bit more kind of like drawing, you know, you're just not, you're not using that much depth to, to the strokes that you're using and things like that, you know? So, um, I, I think the, the drawing ability kind of comes into play, uh, during that time, you know? And what about you, Ad? Did you uh, see anything change whenever you started sketching pretty much every day? Oh man! So basically, <laughs> yeah, like like a lot. Like um, when I started using ZBrush, I was in my first year of uh, industrial design. When I sort of restarted because I tried it out a while back, and after two weeks of skipping school and just <laughs> sleepless ZBrush nights, right? I was like, "This is the future!" But I I knew that I'm lacking concept skills. So then I I started sketching a lot, like. A couple of years, four hours a day minimum of sketching, and that helped me a lot. For that, it's uh, it's definitely what I recommend: thumbnails and sketches, and fix your proportions, study anatomy, right? It's very important. Uh, that that puts you in the top all the time. Um, if you understand the proportions, those skills transition, you know, from two D to three D all the time. So um, I'm just wondering, could, could I give a real quick shout out to somebody? Uh, oh, I was, of course. It kind of came to mind. Um, so early on in my uh, career, I was telling you guys, whenever I first started learning Maya, I had all these questions and there wasn't any resources. Um, you guys know of an artist by the name of uh, Steven Stahlberg? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I remember his, his stuff was amazing way, way back then. It's still amazing now. Um, but... I reached out to him via email multiple times, and this guy 
took the time to answer my questions and, and help me out. And like, I remember who I was at that point and he had no reason to help me out. And he went out of his way multiple times to answer uh, questions and things like that. He probably doesn't even remember even talking to me or whatever, but <laughs> just cause I was, I was just like nobody, you know? Um, but that's kind of always stuck with me and like, you know, the whole, the whole teaching thing and wanting to help other people out. I, I still remember to this day, like, just like being thankful that this person took the time out of their busy schedule and they were an awesome artist, but they still paid attention to this person that was just like a nobody and, you know, kind of fed into, uh, me as an artist. So, um, yeah, definitely want to give a shout out to him for that. Right, yeah, it's always nice to have those people that that do that. You know, take the time and and I, I, I find that more often than not in this industry that people were willing to give their information out or take a moment of their time to you know critique a portfolio or or take a look at something and give a quick uh, quick response. I always like that about the community. Yeah. I always like that about Zebrush Hangout, actually. Um, that's that's. Oh, I was actually surprised the first time that I came in Zebrush Hangout, and I met a lot of people there. They were so quick to to be helpful. I was literally surprised. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I was surprised at how friendly you guys were when I first came in. So. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah. we got to know you, and then just all <laughs> <laughs> down here. Yeah, I mean, the whole hangout is actually a pretty, pretty nice community by far. Was reluctant at first, but you know, y'all got to me. Yeah, <laughs> try to try to do that because I was like always, I was I was uh, I mean, kind of fed from where I was just working on by myself, and I had so many damn questions and had no one to talk. to. No one answered any questions, and so it's kind of like a selfish reason. But in the end, it it helps a lot of people out. And I'm yeah. Very grateful to what Zebra Hangout gets to do for others. And for all you guys that want to go in Zebra Hangout, buy our T-shirts. Help us out. <laughs> <laughs> we got some new candy bars coming out next month, so you know. Like... I know if Ron doesn't pay us. Y'all need to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm still plugging that. <laughs> So, uh, so Nick, you have some Gumroads um, going on, or, or what do you got on that Gumroad page of yours? Well, uh, like I was saying, if you uh, just search for my name, Nick Zook, so Z U C C, and you do com Gumroad, you can find my Gumroad page pretty easily on there. There's there's a lot of free stuff on there. Um, I also have a um, a website uh, where I sell digital models, and it's called Digital Models digital3dmodels.com, sorry. Um, and I'm posting those yeah. links in the chat right now for you guys. Yeah, so there's, again, there's a lot of free content on there as well. Um, so one of the things lately that I've made, you know, like whenever ZBrush, the new 4R8 come out, came out, I had to kind of rebuild the interface that I'm using. And I know everybody's probably got their own their own flavor of their, their interface, but if you're kind of new and you're starting out and uh, you don't want to build an interface, um, you might want to pick that up. I also made a, um, I've got that whole series of uh, videos for doing hard surface work inside of um, ZBrush. And let's see here. Um, and those videos are awesome, by the way. I still point mm -hmm. people to them a lot. Like people ask me questions. I'm like, you should watch these. <laughs> That's Thanks. how I learned. Um, but for that workflow, um, you guys probably know that ZBrush has got tools like all over the place and all these different menus. So the other thing I made is just a dedicated um, part of the interface is just uh, used for hard surface. So I've got all the tools that I use. I like, you know, you got mirror and mirror and weld, delete hidden, close holes, all that. Um, but also you can do panel loops and group loops and stuff like that. Um, and I put it all together in one kind of location for that. So if you're kind of doing the hard surface thing, you might, you might, uh, kind of, kind of like that as well. Yeah. Nice. Free stuff is always good. Yeah. Loves free stuff, especially when it's useful. Because I use your um, your male base mesh guy topology. Yeah. I use that. Yeah, I completely stole it. <laughs> and I'm not remorseful at all. I don't feel guilty. 
no, no. Um, so the other thing I did that uh, I, I I converted that over because that one has um, layers on it to like raise and lower the arms. But if you're just starting off with a new project and you just want like a really quick mesh in Dynamesh mode, I created a bust version of that, and I also created a um, you know a, the full figure version. Mm -hmm. um, so again, if it's just like you could very quickly just you know turn it into whatever you want to uh make you know at, at the beginning i was uh well at least way back when you know subdivisions were probably the the bigger way that people were sculpting so that's why i concentrated a lot on worrying about like what the topology was and mm -hmm. my thought was that i could make a base mesh that people that didn't know a lot about topology they could just have something to start off with and not really have to worry about that part but then you know Dynamash came along, and that was a pretty big game changer for th oh, for yeah. things, you know. Yeah, and I never really kind of thought about people using that as a project because I I was using it myself, and I kept going, "Wow, this sucks! I got to go and delete delete the layers and do some work to it before I can start actually sculpting on it." So I figured I'd just like make a new version that's just kind of ready to go, and people can just start sculpting on it. Yeah, it's super useful. The UV layout, super good. Topology, super good. I used did that. You, I transferred did you everything. Make it, sorry, to interrupt. Did you make that for Pixel Logic, or did they contact you and were like, "Hey"? No, I made it, and I was giving it away on the the forums, you know. And then Paul reached out to me and said, "Hey, would you would you like to give it away with the program?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. That that's cool." So now that that's a pretty nice thing for me to say. Yeah, I got one of my models inside of the ZBrush program, you know. So. Yeah. so that's when you made your first million with that one. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they did first half build, and that's why you have your base right there. They send me a, they send me a big check every every month, and uh, that's yeah. awesome. No, no. Uh, <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. that big check for six dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you got twenty five minutes left. 25 uh, minutes. Crash number four. Oh, you know it's good. You know, every time you say that, I save. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> we know who's not winning. <laughs> <laughs> and mention, and uh, to go off of that winning comment, for those in the audience, Please vote now who you think is going to win, who has the best piece of artwork. And I'm going to go through that right now. We have Christopher Jones with the alien snake. Looking pretty dope. We got Jim506. We've got KMAC with the blank canvas. It's actually got that bug where it, it um, filled it with a flat, so I gotta reload it. And Oopsies. then we got Lonnie with his uh, personal creation. And then we've got oh. Tay. And then we've got Nick Z. So put it in the chat, write down who you think should win. Hey, what about me, Dad? All right, and then we got Ad. He's come back. Don't worry about it. Ad Lazy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Hey, yeah, and you making something from StarCraft? Uh, wow. The you funny thing, uh, did you know that actually Zerg from StarCraft are uh, inspired from Alien? No, no, no. They no. are completely no. inspired from Alien. No, I mean I don't want to know about it. If today everything <laughs> comes from everything. Huh? They even admitted that, so. So you know it's, it's true. Wait, you, you're just going to StarCraft now? That's what you're doing? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Sip, Sip, fuck this alien stuff, are you going to do StarCraft? Huh? Which, that is pretty bold, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do it. Yeah. No, 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 I'm, I'm trying to make like a, like an... In Interesting version of a queen, of an alien queen. Nah, uh, just be a rebel. Say, you know what? It's StarCraft. It's aliens, per se. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
so um so what what keeps you uh doing art and cg like uh what um what, like is it just something within you is it something that you saw and inspired you was it an artist or a piece of artwork nick um well do you mean like currently what keeps me going mm-hmm. or like yeah, was yeah, it a sure. um i don't know i just like i just have to make things and if i don't make things i don't I don't feel right as a person so uh, ah. you know hopefully you guys can relate to that as artists i'm, I'm sure <laughs> yeah i got yeah. i got the same sickness yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, i don't know like, hear that bro. yeah so i get real cranky when i don't get to make art you know so <laughs> yeah know. anxiety sets in if i don't if i'm not working Art. <laughs> yeah, basically, have, yeah, you know, I, I I love sculpting, and but it's it's like I I love two D too. I I like a lot of different things. Um, it always just feels like, you know, I'm bouncing from this one thing to another. You know, like I'm I'm sure people that are working in a studio, if you're like you know if you're a model or you're just you're doing that hardcore like every every day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they just get better and better. You know, um there's a part of me that wishes like, uh, I don't know. I wish I could just like, maybe just sculpt all the time, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I do have fun kind of doing a lot of different things, you know, but uh, I don't know. Don't want to be Jack of all trades, you know, master. Oh, yeah. Of, yeah. That, that whole thing. So I was actually to be, to be quite honest, I was a little bit nervous about um, doing this because I just, I actually haven't, I haven't sculpted in ZBrush for a while. So I was like, okay, I was talking to Karen. I was like, okay, I gotta, I'm going to sculpt tonight. So I just, I got to get back in there and, uh, you know, warm up those muscles, you know, get that motor, uh, was it muscle memory back? Right. Yeah. We're doing all right, Nick. You already got one vote for you. One right. vote. Okay, cool. Right. How many do I, how many do I need? How many votes? You one, just two. need one. That's just all you one. need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rating champ with just two votes. So, so there you go. <laughs> I'm like halfway there. All right. All right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's great. Right. Hmm. Yeah, these are looking good, man. These are looking real good. Yeah, these these xenomorphs and aliens are not easy to sculpt in an hour and a half. Yeah, I'm having a little bit too much fun with this thing, so. Actually, I am just bullshitting, to tell you the truth. I'm looking, I have a picture, that's it. Mm-hmm. It's looking good, uh, dude, looks mean. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah, dude. It's pedable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a cat, <laughs> it's pedable. <laughs> won't attack you. I like how the other cats. You know, that's that's my one thing about Prometheus, though. I, I really wanted to enjoy that movie, but the guy had to pet the snake. He just, he should have just stayed away from the snake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he was, a, he was a scientist, too, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Dumb yeah, scientist. I don't understand. I, don't understand. <laughs> I mean, he knows the snake. He, what, no eyes, looks like a parasite. <laughs> yeah, it was in the script. I would be that guy, though. <laughs> You know, you would have been that guy, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You, you would have been the guy that pit a snake or mm-hmm. something that yeah. would actually it's not even a snake. It would, you'll know, it probably has space aids, man. What you gonna, what's going to happen to you? <laughs> how did you know, man? It's, it's alive. How, how, do how, you know? how would I know? Well, you, I guess I would know as soon as you touch the goddamn snake, huh? <laughs> wow, well, you gotta put this <laughs> so that one way or another. Yeah, that that, that movie series always like suffers from dumbass scientist syndrome. It's like, oh, we're on a new planet. Let's not put on any masks. Let's step on this poor thing. Take a deep Actually, breath. that's nothing that pissed me off. Like they took their mask off. Yeah. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, there might have been oxygen, but that that doesn't mean that's the only thing there. But probably. Kelly or some bullshit, some made-up substance, I don't know. Probably explode yourself when you open the mask, I don't know. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so it's a bunch of the Alien movies, but you know, we, we actually, this is the time to talk about it, since we're doing Aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Which one was your favorite one, first of all? 
which alien movie? Um, yes. Yeah. Mm, man, I do. I I like the uh, the camera work and everything from the first Alien movie, but Aliens with the Marines coming in and uh, I don't know. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver in there with the flamethrower. It's, oh yeah, that's a tough right. one. Oh yeah. Going down the list. Mm-hmm. Next. I like, I, I and, like the. F- I actually liked the fourth one. I know people hated that one. But that xenomorph underwater swimming like a shark, that was the scariest shit I ever saw. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Uh, cool. uh, actually, the first one, I, I actually, that got me into Alien. So he was right. The first one got me into it. Then I played all the other games. Then I got really depressed. And that's it. <laughs> Jen? Probably the games I, would, I wouldn't based off. Yeah, Jim, what's what's yours, man? Um, yeah, I guess I, I don't... I didn't see the movies, like, focusing on, on the argument, you know? Like, I, I just watch the, the monsters and stuff, and yeah. I, I just never care like, in any movie. If, you know, oh, this could <laughs> happen, or this could not happen. I, I don't care. I'm watching a movie, you know? So, uh, for me, the the most uh, groundbreaking one was Prometheus, as far as uh, you know the characters, the you know the the creatures. They did a lot of research and, and development uh, with that, and and I think you know maybe maybe for some people like the the movie sucks or whatever, but uh, for me like all the work done there in in vis- visual effects and and you know 3D work uh, is like groundbreaking. You know, and the first yeah. alien, of course. Oh yeah, Jim. At, at the end of the day, that's your job, right? As a character designer, you gotta look for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's up to the other people's job to make sure the movie is cohesive. But I digress. Karen, you're next. Uh, Prometheus is the only one I've seen, and I really actually, you know what? I should yeah, say anyway. I <laughs> anyway, Lonnie, Lonnie. <laughs> Go to someone who's a learned doctor. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go back to old school. Mm-hmm. I saw. I saw the first one, probably before most everybody in here was born. Yeah. And yeah. No, that's, nobody that's saw that my, coming, Lonnie. That's, nobody saw that's that coming. That's my favorite. That's my actually. Favorite. But, sh- well, hold on. Oh. But out of all of them, if, put all of them together as a compilation, I would pick the first one. And then probably a tie between uh, the the alien movie with the Marines and the last one, Covenant, because I really like Covenant because it was it, it brought more of the horror story back to the space war. Yeah, I love the way those aliens moved in that one. It, it was so freaky. I like the ending on it. I mean, it was like, yeah, yeah, you, you know, shit's gone bad. By the way, what was that alien movie where they aliens landed the home? town they start fucking up a school or something like that oh jeez yeah i saw yeah. that one uh, what's that was it, yeah, that, it was a, i was an alien versus predator one because it was a oh no, no no that movie, was alien it? versus predator. it was like a pure alien movie where they it was in a town or something like that mm. oh that, that was, was alien that was, two i think right oh that was alien two was it it was on earth right was it the one where, uh, where where they where they land on that planet and they're trying they they find that little girl right? That's the second one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the second the... one. Oh, well, that was, shit, that was a funny yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, that's the one where they're crawling around in the the air domes. He probably remembers. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, you probably Try remember the way. part where uh, they were in the you know where they were on the planet, right? That's the same one that had the water scene, the underwater scene in the reactor. Oh, the oh, one with the yeah. underwater scene was uh, four. That was yeah, four. that was four. That was four? Was it? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you, sure that wasn't the, are you sure that wasn't the third one? I think, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was 3.5. Yeah. What about you, Tay? What, what, what's your lineup? Uh, I really like the first one. Um, and then the, uh, the Predator versus Alien. Uh, I really like the Predator series, so seeing them like duke it out. I mean, it wasn't probably the greatest of all of them, but 
so it was cool to see them duke it out. It was a guilty pleasure, right? Right. Yep. It's like Freddy versus Jason. It really, you know, it's a shitty movie, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you just gotta see what's gonna that's happen. That's the nostalgia, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he said, uh, "You, you just want to play on it, and yeah, you got my money." I know I'm, it's, it's a shitty movie, but you got it. <laughs> and we got 12 minutes. 12 minutes. So everyone in the audience, we have one vote for Nick Z, but we need more votes from you. So go ahead, put in the chat right now who you think is winning. All right. We have Ad with the Hydralisk alien. We got hey. Chris with the snake alien. Jen with the dog alien. <laughs> Hiram with the alien. Karen with the uh, artistic alien, alien. tie-dye alien, Tie -dye. <laughs> Lonnie with his own creation, Nick Z with his own creation, and then Tay with her xenomorph as well. So put it in the chat right now. Who you think's winning? All right, and we have about oh, almost ten minutes left, and I'd like to have three questions for the special guest. And um, first one was, what was your first gig in the CG industry? Like, whether freelance or actual job, what was your first gig? Mm, well, technically, my first job was working for a magnet company called Magnet. And I was using Adobe Illustrator to make designs for that. And that was technically the first one but uh i don't know there wasn't a whole lot of art going on 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 that one so i'd say my my first real one was uh i worked for this company like i was saying uh color associates mm -hmm. um now i think their name is group 360 um like i was saying they uh they work for these different corporations whenever they would go to have trade shows and they would you know the, the big giant graphics that's printed on that um we would make the graphics for that so i was a 3d artist and i worked with uh, other designers that were 2d artists and they took the 3d elements and we incorporated those into designs and stuff like that so it was um definitely very cool mm -hmm. um but at the time i was doing high-res art uh you know because it had to be blown up the oh. size of a you know these big walls right and i wanted to break into the games industry and at that time that was like PlayStation One graphics and stuff like that. So I can't remember what the poly count was, but and like the texture budget. Think about like 256 by 256 or whatever. And that's probably even being generous, maybe. Right. You know. Uh, so it was pretty tough for me to break in. Uh, it took me like two years of working on the side, you know, building up my portfolio until I got that first gig. Um, actually, Tom McGuire that was on there. Um, he he was on the. Uh, the thing you, you give a shout out to him um the first job that i had in california was uh graystone technologies and we were working on this uh thing it looked like imagine like a wave runner but you had like these goggles that you put your face into so it was kind of like a virtual reality ride mm -hmm. and uh we were working on this thing i think it was called merc racer is what it was called and uh yeah, that, that thing never, I don't think it ever really got off the ground. So that's whenever I uh, decided to go and work for, for Sony after that. So, yeah. And so who, second question, who do you think or are grateful to for getting you into or, or setting you on your path for CG? Well, I would say, okay, at... Um, when I worked at Color Associates, I had uh, my art director, uh, Joseph Tui. Um, he was, I don't know, he was probably one of the best art directors that I've ever worked with. Um, Why do you say that? I, I don't know. He just his, his ability to kind of come in and talk to clients and come up with ideas. And at the time, like... You know the the work that they were doing um one of the reasons why i wanted to work at that place was they had silicon graphics computers i don't know if any, any <laughs> yeah. those, right? so this yeah. was like right before the windows nt thing happened mm -hmm. and so it was like ooh, they've got silicon graphics computers there so um these guys have been doing work in silicon graphics computers for quite some time and they could just make these beautiful renders and everything else like that right so it was just like really cool to see uh 
him do his work. But then, you know, he was like, I, I know who I was coming in there and I was, I was a nobody, but he was just very patient with me. And like, you know, there, there are certain people where I can look back on my career and I know that they, they took a chance on me and, Mm -hmm. you know, I, kind of rose to the occasion which is good but like looking back I, I i think to myself like would i have given myself that chance I, I don't know so you know like i can i can pinpoint those those people along the way so i'm definitely grateful for for him and i he was one of the first art directors that i had and probably one of the best you know mm-hmm. so right. so third and final question if you could be any program brush or plug-in, which <laughs> one would you be and why? Uh, I think that's pretty easy. Let's, let's go ZBrush because, you know, uh, I'm Nick Z. Uh, <laughs> so, they named the program after me, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. And just, just so you guys know, I, I didn't do that as an ego kind of thing. It was because my last name is Zuccarello, and most people, mm-hmm. every time I've met them uh, and told them my name, they go, what? So I'm just like, you know, maybe Nick Z might be a little bit easier for people to remember, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. uh... Uh, I like the fr- like the cocky. <laughs> yeah. More cocky. Yeah. Okay, we we can go with that then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. That is great. And we have just a few more minutes, six more minutes on the show. And again, calling out to the audience, and they have voted. We have Snake Alien. We got one for Chris. Congratulations wow. on your first point. <laughs> That kind of seems harsh. <laughs> <laughs> and then Karen, of course, has a vote. And, um, and of course, Nick has a vote. So we do have a tie, and we need a tiebreaker from the audience. All right, between the three of Nick, who I'm on right now, Nick Zuccarello. Yeah. I, hope, we go. I hope my students are listening, you know? Yeah. Right? I mean, if you want that grade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you've this got Karen who is uh, yeah. rendering, and then you've got Christopher. Show him your snake, Chris. Show him your snake. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Right, there we go. Ah. And then we have Ask Jen over here as well. Add. Uh, Tay. Yeah. And Lonnie, you got a point as well. So we have a four way tie. <laughs> four way tie what do, you, what do you do in that case Ron uh, nobody wins and that's oh. very 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 sad we go show. into the back alley and we duke it out yeah. <laughs> we flip a coin yeah. outside. <laughs> how good is your crab maga <laughs> <laughs> more crab less maga that's what <laughs> uh, we have a question from Carlos um it would be great to know if Nick had any specific reasons for getting going into teaching or what was that or was that always sort of the plan? No, um, like I was saying, it was just kind of this random thing where um, my art director at the time when I was at EA just mentioned that there was this, this job opening. And like I said, I, I already like I already knew that I kind of enjoyed talking to people and kind of trying to show them how to use some tools and stuff like that. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I just said, no, oh, well, I'll give it a shot. You know, and like I said, I, I had no idea what, what the heck I was doing. Um, but I, I don't know. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I, I guess the one thing I didn't say is that um, during my time at EA, that program, it went away. So um I went back into production and I always kind of remembered in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, I really like that teaching thing. I wish that didn't go away, you know? Mm -hmm. And then whenever the opportunity opened up at FIA for me to be part of uh, their program, I I jumped, you know? So, and I'm, I'm definitely glad I, I did, you know, Um, there's, there's things I definitely miss about uh, being in production and, uh, like I miss a lot of my uh, my friends that I used to work with every day, you know. So right. that that part, um, yeah. Uh, but I get to see them on a 
fairly decent basis you know um i'm still pretty close to the studio and we try to keep a good relationship with ea and you know try to get people hired there and you know obviously we're trying to get people hired on all, all kinds of different places but right. uh you know since they're down the road um we've, we also have another um game shop in town called iron galaxy um if you guys know that they worked on the killer instinct series oh, cool. Um, cool. yeah yeah so some oh, of our yeah. students go there yeah yeah oh, man i love killer instinct yeah dark sounds interesting people we have two minute warning we need a vote from all of you in the audience all right we have nick right here nick zuccarello our very special guest we have alani here i think he should win definitely vote in the chat karen right here hiram jen 506 Christopher, or the snake alien, whichever one you want to call, and add as well, and then we have Tay. All right, so whoever you think won tonight, put it in the chat. We have a four-way tie. We need it broken by you. So Nick, thank you so much for being on the show. It was great Thanks. to Thanks, have Nate. you on. And, uh, and yeah, man, you've been a hero of mine, like I said, plenty of times in the chat and on the show. And uh, it was a great honor to have you on well, here. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, everybody else, let's do a quick mic check of our panel and special guest. Add, let them know where they can find you. You can find me at ArmStation by the name Adrian M. I'm a freelance concept designer and character designer. Christopher. Uh, the, you can, my name is Christopher Jones. You can find me on Art Station, Facebook, either one, either under Christopher Jones or Pac Man King. Jim. I'm oh, sorry. Go, uh, ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm just saying I'm available for freelance. That's it. All right. Sorry to cut you off. Jen? Uh, yeah, on Art Station by Jen506. Hiley? What? Uh, you guys can find me on Highly Top Secret Art Station. On uh, Facebook, also Highly Top Secret. Karen? You can find me on Art Station under my name. And thank you again, Nick. Thank you, thank you for coming on. No problem. And Lonnie? You can find me on Art Station. It's Lonnie Sargent, L O N N I E S A R G E N T. You can also find me on Facebook. My Facebook's open to everybody. And Tay? You can find me on Art Station, uh, Tay Allen, and here on Facebook, I'm also open. And Nick, let them know where they can find you. Well, you could Google my name, Nick Zuck, Z U C C, and you could find a lot of different stuff. But, um, you know, I keep my blog that I have, which is nickzook.blogspot.com, and I've got lots of different links to all those different places you guys all talked about. So. Yeah. And Stefan Vala says you taught him everything he knows. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Well, almost. Well, almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Right. And uh, Ad voted for himself, which is really cool. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is that a special kind of person, isn't he? And my name is Spicer mm -hmm. McLeroy. You can find me anywhere on the internet under Shotgun Scream. Shotgun as in the firearm, Scream as in yell. Again, that's Shotgun Scream. And uh, thank you to the artist panel. Thank you to Nick. Everybody say good night, YouTube. Good night, YouTube. Good night, YouTube. Thanks, Nick. Uh, thank you for the vote.